everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Today, I'm sitting down with Morin Atias, who plays Ava, a single mother trying to protect her son and avoid deportation on the NBC drama The Village. The show is a real tearjerker centered around an apartment building in Brooklyn where the tenants function more like family. Take a look. I went by a place the other day intended on asking for a divorce. What stopped you? I saw she was still wearing her wedding ring. I couldn't take something else away from her. Is it leaving her with false hope just as bad? Or maybe it's not false hope. She gave the ring back. It's over. I'll file the paperwork. I understand you're upset. I, I get I, it. I'm just trying to figure out where I stand. But two weeks from now, where I stand might be 6,000 miles away, so maybe there's no point in asking. But I think you should ask yourself if you're really in love with us, or does it just feel as good to have a family again? Please help me welcome Moran Atias. I mean, do you cry at this show because I cry at this show? I was just getting emotional, to be honest. And I'm so good. No, <laughs> no but really, and the storylines are just really designed to to tear at your heartstrings, especially Ava's. Uh, so when you yeah. first got the script, what was your reaction to it? Um, I only read the script after I went to audition for it. So it was really interesting. Um, I saw, I just got a scene and I didn't have any time to prepare and I'm, I'm, a, I'm big on preparation. I love to do research, I love to prepare, uh, hide away from the world and really f drop into the circumstances of the character, but I didn't have any time for that. So just the stakes were so high for the scene where she's originally in the first episode gets arrested um, that I thought, wow, her freedom is so violated and, and how do I tap onto that? And I, I, I personally experienced something in those lines and I just brought that to, to the room. And then they said, we want you to play the part. I was like, oh my God, I have to go to read, this, read the script. So when I read the script, I was surprised, happily, pleasantly surprised that the script was so beautiful and I get to be part of this storytelling. And I think it's emotional because it's real. It's not, you, you know these um, things happen in our country and other countries. Um, every character represents a storyline that I think you can identify with or know somebody that is going through that or not know them personally, but um, this is a country of immigrants. So I'm sure a friend, a neighbor, um, is going through that process. So what is Ava's backstory for those who aren't familiar with the village? Well, shame on you if you don't know what the backstory is. I know what it I is. I know you do. I know you do. Um, the thing is, the backstory was a little of a mystery, even for, for myself. And uh, they, they tell us as we go along that she came here and she had a husband. And uh, not a fixed marriage, but a marriage of, from love. And she um, had a child here uh, with, this, with this man um, who was born in the United States. Which I already thought, like, I know so many friends of mine that their parents came here, but they're completely 100% American um, with the flavor of, you know, the homeland. Um, and it was just about the issue. I just kept asking myself, why did she come here? Why did she come to the United States? Uh, what circumstances does she have back, back home in Iran? And I know so many of my friends, they're in the arts and they cannot go back to Iran because they've been vocal about their opinion. Um, and I thought, is that her story? Or is her story that just she wanted to explore the United States? Is it a, a bad marriage? It wasn't clear, but no matter what the circumstances back home, clearly you think that it will be better for you in another country means that it wasn't great. Do you know what I mean? And I, um, I'm an immigrant. I have so many friends that are immigrants. And, you know, we love our country, but we love America. And America is such a welcoming and wonderful country. Even with these stories, I feel like I'm so lucky to be here um, because America is great. It is still the land of all opportunities and dreams. And we, should, we shouldn't forget that. I do love about your storyline, though, is that it shows how difficult it can be for some of these people to find representation and just support and even trying to stay in the country. I mean, Ava's really limited and is, uses the village, this community, mm -hmm. and this apartment building to really navigate the, the legal system. 
Right. I mean, you know, we the first time when we the first day of shooting, um, I had this really um, dramatic scene where I, I realized that my legal rights are very limited and I don't have representation. And Gabe, one of our neighbors in the building, is an attorney, but he's not a certified one yet. And I'm forced to convince him to represent me. And then the writer and director come to me, and I'm very emotional at this point. The writer and creator come to me um, and the director and ask me to do it with a smile. And I thought, how can I be smiling at this moment? I can lose everything, can be separated from my son. And I did one take, and I was very emotional. I just took on all that you know, responsibility of, be, you know, of the responsibility of being a mother and not being able to provide. And then I was like, okay, surrender to their request. Maybe there's something in, in that. And I did it with a smile. And after that take, I started sobbing because hope is a choice we take upon and it's not the easy one, but it's the best one. It's so easy to be lazy and afraid and, you, and use fear to lead us in our choices. And that divides us and separates us. And, and keeping hope to empower the other person, to give him the strength that he can fight for me. He is capable of, of helping me. And that's such a beautiful thing that he has that independence, that position. Uh, made it, enforces the essence of the show for me, what it represents to me. And that's the sense of community. And that's why I'm part of this show. I just, I just think that it's a beautiful reminder for all of us to uh, put on a smile, to be curious about one another, to leave our doors and hearts open. Yeah. I'm wondering, have any fans reached out to you on social media just because your storyline is so of the moment with what's going on in our country with immigration? Have people reached out to you just to thank you or to share their own stories? Um, yeah, I mean... I mean I'm surrounded by, you know, a lot of fr people from the Persian community. Um, but just, yeah, people in general are so attracted and drawn to the show. So I get um, very encouraging, um, encouraging emails and messages that it just feels great that we, we're connecting with someone and it, it matters to them. I also love that Ava's story is uh, expanding beyond her deportation issues. Mm -hmm. She's finding love with Ben, which I was very excited about <laughs> and I'm like rooting for. So uh, how important is that for you to see her grow and that she really does have roots here and she has a life in this country? I mean, being in love is the greatest thing yeah. of all time, right? So just to have that support system, but a, a, tender, a tender man um, that cares about you and cares about your child mm -hmm. and accepts you, even if you were forced to do things that you're not proud of. I mean, we, even when we lie, because we all do, uh, we lie from fear to be accepted the way we are. We're trying to protect something. So to know that a man or anybody is going to accept you just the way you are, with your flaws and your choices, is just something that I'm like, oh. Yeah. I like that she has that, that, that tender space in her life, that she's not going through this alone. And he genuinely loves her, her son. Speaking of your son, you have the cutest little scene cutest. partner. Oh my god! <laughs> That's it's not hard to pretend that you love him and that I he's your son. I love him. Yeah, he's I'm like yeah. I do all these. I don't know why I talk like that when I'm next to because he's so cute. He's so cute, right? You see that I get that voice, but um, and he's really bright. And we even the time off camera is so fun uh, for me to spend with him because he's such a bright kid, you know. Um, he learns different languages. He's learning Chinese. Like hello. And I'm like, okay, I'll trade you. I'll teach you Italian. So now, because you have to impress them, they're not. He wasn't really into me in the beginning, but I'm like, you're gonna be into me. You're gonna be. You're gonna love your mama. And he's, he's just a. It's so cute. I love working with kids. I really do. Yeah, he's so cute. And the cast in general. I mean, every storyline is so dramatic in its own way, and but it's all connected in that that vibe, I wonder, is that what it's like on set? It seems like a really friendly crew. I, I have to say, it's the first time that I'm experiencing such, such a community, such a beautiful, everybody brings such a different part to the table and our table reads, I'm, I'm looking forward to them and I'm like, oh, we're done. I felt everything I needed to feel, joy and laughter and uh, the tenderness of Dominic. I mean, you know, like, 
Um, he speaks Italian, so I can, you know, impress him a little. Uh, it's just, it's just wonderful. And you know, the different ages, um, the value of 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 an older man and the community, and the value of a really young girl and their perspective on life. It's just, it gives everyone importance. It's not just, oh, this generation matters or this background matters. No, we all do. And through this kind of like stew of cultures and backgrounds, we create something that is the best of humanity, you know, the, the best part of us. It really does make me kind of wish for those days of how I, I hear New York used to be, because now I feel like a lot of people live in apartments and they don't know their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be like a real value. And I'm hoping like people watch this and like knock on their neighbor's door and get to know them because that community is so important, but I feel like we're kind of missing it now. Yeah, I think that comes along with fear. Yeah. You know, I think it was like that when I grew up in Israel and now our doors are closed as well. Um, but fear, you know, um, allows us to cave in and protect ourselves. And it, it takes a little bit of courage and curiosity to, um, to know, to really get to know. And now we're, we're challenged by uh, technology. Obviously, there's great things about technology. And don't get me wrong, I love everything about it. But we get disconnected because it's just like you swipe, you scan, and there's no touch, like, a sense, like smells, touching. These are human needs that we crave. This is how we bring back memories. You don't think like, oh, when I swiped his text, it made me feel. But when you smelled your grandma's, grandmother's bread, you remember your grandmother in a deep way. That's part of also, I went into like a little speech about method acting, <laughs> but, uh, but that's how you tap on true emotions. Um, and I actually have to say that after being part of this show, I started opening my house much more. I've been hosting, um, inviting a lot of different people to my life, uh, getting curious about them. So it was a great reminder for myself, even though it is, it's a great value in my, my upbringing. But I practiced that. And, um, you know, it's really easy texting, bye, mom, text, emoji. Like, I mean, that's the limit. Heart, okay, I'm done. I, I've given her my heart. What else does she want? But I, made, I make an effort to, to hear her voice, to ask how she's, how she's doing, and to put that in my calendar. And that's part of, like, you know, now we have to plan our day and carve time for that. Like, we need to carve time for self-love. We don't do that either. So I'm, I'm, I'm growing, so I'm a bit wiser now. Me too, hopefully. Um, and that community thing is something that you've you've brought into other parts of your life. I know today, Me First launches. Yeah. And that's about bringing women together. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. So if we're talking about, um, you know, self, self-love, I just felt that, you know, with with the great things that are happening in our society and people are being more aware to the injustice and the... Um, um, the positions that we have been, you know, stories that we've been carried, carrying for, for years in secrecy. Now everything is coming out, which is a great thing. Um, I thought we still, in, in, for me, for my generation, I still feel that um, my thought process need to change. I need to think of me as well. I need to think of me first. Uh, and it's not a selfish thing. Because that's what I taught myself. You know, if I think about myself, that means I'm selfish. Is just to put me on the to-do list as well. Self-love. And that's how the, came, uh, the name came about. And what I really want to create is a community for women that we feel free and comfortable to talk. Talk has become like this derogative verb that they attach to women. And I think talk is a wonderful thing it is something we must do to heal and recover. It's, it's medicine. And so it starts with talking and having conversations and then into obviously action plans. And we're producing our um, round table, a new talk show. And each talk show will be um, focusing on one subject matter. And we bring five, up to seven women from different backgrounds and experiences to share their stories and then provide solutions and outlets to women on our uh, Facebook uh, group page that is launching today. And I'm very excited. This is actually the first time I'm talking about it publicly. I'm very excited. I'm very proud of the group of women that, is, uh, that are part of the community. And um, the next step is also to have a database of women professional that if I want to um, 
produce my next movie or host my next event, I will have a list of women, editors, chefs, photographers, makeup artists. Um, I don't have that in my vocabulary today. I, I, I know a lot of people and still, when we were launching the first event, I really wanted to have a woman chef because we were just women and we were talking freely about everything we wanted to talk about. Um, some of it is subject matters that I don't feel comfortable, comfortable talking to my mom because I want an advice without the pressure. Okay, mom, you know, yes, I get it. I'm 38. I get it. I know my biological clock is ticking. I hear it, you know. Um, but I want to ask my, my friends that have, you know, experienced different choices, different um, lanes of actions to have a child alone, not alone. I mean, I don't know that, you know. So where do I go? Where, who do I ask? So that's just, you know, table, table number one. Um, and, and through those exchange of knowledge and experiences, I think we can empower each other higher and financially be feeling of value and worth. So instead of hiring a male chef, which was the only list, I had so many friends that are chefs and only men. So I was like, how do I not know one? And I asked all my, my contact list and still nobody came up with, and I was like, I'm sure, I hope after our conversation, we will be um, receiving a lot of emails and a lot of uh, data from women around the world that are professional and would like to be hired, paid by me for first, and then by the rest of us and the community of me first. I love that. I think a lot of women put themselves second or last on their own list. And I think that creates a, a feeling of loneliness that they're in these struggles alone. And I find that even when I've come up with my friends from college, we'll go through something and then we tell our friends after. And they're like, why didn't you share that with me while you were going through it? We could have talked about it. I could have helped you. And I think a lot of women feel like they have to do it alone. So I love the idea of this where it's just like, let's talk about it. Let's put it out on the table. We're all going through the same things. Right. And sometimes it, it's even, um, I've been very fortunate in my career. And I never felt that I have less opportunities because I'm a woman. But in the past couple years, even with people that I work with, I felt that I can't ask questions and that my questions would make me look that I'm not educated enough or smart about it. And I was raised in a culture where asking questions makes you smarter. And then you learn how to, to ask the, right, the better questions. And those questions define your path. And if I'm being belittled or responded to in a very uh, diminishing way by my, my own team, by the way, that person is fired. Um, but it took, me, it took me years to have my own voice. And I'm considered a very strong woman and that made her choices, very independent. Still, I didn't have the voice at the time when I was asking questions just to know my way about, like, the legal aspect of my work. And I'm starting a new business. What do I do about that? Do I go... How do I finance this project independently? Do I put my own money? You know, just normal questions. And I realized that, oh, when I ask a female attorney, I'm responding in a different way. So I don't want any woman to be in that position. You should ask, or any child. Any child, you know, when you have a teacher, and I remember this growing up, and I was uh, always a curious girl. I was a curious little girl that wanted to know everything about everything. And my grandfather was a rabbi, and he taught me the Torah, the Bible. So I had all this knowledge about all these stories, and it's different interpretations. And I remember going to school, and I would ask the teacher that would talk, you know, the Bible. I was like, but wait a second. My grandfather told me that there's another interpretation. She's like, Moran, Moran, out. And she would kick me out of class. And I was like, I'm the only girl that is actually interested. Everybody doesn't care. They just want to get, the, <laughs> get like, we were present, moving on, right? And I really wanted to learn. And I thought, I, I want to allow every woman and every child uh, the confidence to ask any question and, and the safety to be responded with kindness. I can't wait to see how the it's so it's on Facebook, right? So yes, it's like a we community. Just you could be my first friend. I will I'm add you. <laughs> but I love that women will be able to go in and like share and talk. And I think that's so important, especially now with all the things you've mentioned, especially in the, in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you said you work kind of behind the camera as well, mm -hmm. producing and different. Yeah. So why is that something that's important to you now? It's, it always has been important to me, uh, storytelling. I think it shapes our culture and our opinion and... Um, and 
connects us. Um, you know, growing up in Israel, you get to experience a lot of divisions, a lot of groups, people taking sides. And I think story can unite people in a compelling way and allow us to understand one each, one each other. So that's why I think it's very visceral for me. Um, and it's the ultimate, you know, it's, it's, it's a full creative process. I think of an idea, I see a world, I'm interested in these characters and their opinion and how they come alive um, through thousands of drafts. Uh, and, and actually I'm in New York um, staying the whole week to write and hopefully, hopefully present another baby to the world that I, I, I hope people will enjoy. And what kind of narratives are you interested in telling? Right so now? usually I work with um, true stories. Um, yeah, there's a couple of really big projects I'm very excited about. Um, but now the one that I'm writing um, is a comedy. And I've, I, yes, I am terrible. <laughs> it, it's, it's crazy to see when, you know, I had my, my friend read the pages and I was like, she would never understand this. And she started, she started laughing. And I was like, why are you laughing? Where are you? She's like, I don't know, is this funny? I'm like, no, you have to give me specifics because I need to learn. So, um, I don't know, it was good enough for um, my favorite um, TV place in the world. So um, partnering with them and, and as soon as I can talk about it, I will make a, like an official announcement, one announcement at a time. Come back and let us know. Yes, okay. I, this, I, I have to compliment you and compliment the show. I enjoy the interviews here. It's so well, you know, it's it's welcoming, and you guys are so curious, really, about the process of of the people that you're hosting. And I just I enjoy watching this show, and I was happy to come back to New York to yeah. to be invited here again. So thank you for offering me this. We opportunity. love having you, and there's so many amazing artists and things going on right now. It's like a joy for us to just talk about it all the time. So mm -hmm. thank you for coming to Build. Um, we do have a couple questions before we get out of here. Who do we have first? Hello. Hi. I was wondering what was one of your favorite scenes to shoot for the village? I have to say that scene that I was mentioning that I was asked to smile because it taught me it taught me to use hope as a tool of, of storytelling, which is necessary. And I'm kind of taking it with me. Great, so you. when you make a mistake, basically, you fall on your face and you learn. <laughs> that's, the, that's where I feel like I, I can grow and enjoy. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. I remember that scene, though, too, because she's smiling, but you can feel the vulnerability in still what she's asking. Uh, and it was the way you played it was very, I mean, she was strong and hopeful, but also you could see that just under the surface. Yeah. She was scared she was going to lose it all. So yeah, next one. Hello. Um, we have a question from on our website, buildseries.com. And it's what's something you've learned from playing your character and that you've taken and applied to your own life? Um, hope. Merci Azizam, which means thanks you. <laughs> thank you very much in Persian. And... Um, the, um, the value of community. Cool, thank you. Thank you. The value of community is everything, I think, now more than ever. The Village shows that. Me First is definitely, I think, going to be a place for women to build community in their own villages. Um, so if you guys want to check out The Village, it airs Tuesdays at 8, 7 Central on NBC. Give it up for Moran Atias. Thank you. So thank you.